Okay, Algebra 2 fans, our topic for today is adding and subtracting rational expressions. And uh, first for you is your joke of the day. I feel sorry for shopping carts. They're always getting pushed around. All right, so we're going to talk about adding and subtracting fractions, and we're going to be doing it with variables, but let's go ahead and do a quick review of if it's just numbers. And the idea, when you add and subtract fractions, you must have a common denominator. The denominator is the bottom of the fraction. If those are the same, then what we do is we add the numerators or subtract the numerators. In this case, we'll add them. So 2 plus 3 over 7, which is 5 over 7. That's your answer. 5 over 9 plus 2 over 3. These are not common denominators, but we can turn the 3 into a 9 by multiplying by 3. Now the thing is, if I multiply the bottom of the fraction by 3, I have to multiply the top of the fraction by the same thing. Because really, this is 3 divided by 3, which is 1. And if I multiply by 1, I'm not changing the value. So I'm going to change this. This becomes 6 ninths. I change the way it looks, but I don't change the value. That's still 2 over 3, okay, plus 5 ninths. Now we can add the numerators, and we get 11 over 9. So when you add and subtract fractions, you do not change the denominator. When you add them, you don't add the denominators, just the numerators. If we subtract here, 2 fifths minus 2 thirds. 5 and 3 are not the same. Uh, we need a common denominator. Both of these, though, go into 15. So we'll say LCD, least common denominator, is equal to 15. So to change the 5 to a 15, we're going to multiply by 3 on the top and the bottom. And to change a 3 to a 15, we're going to multiply by 5 on the top and the bottom. And we get 6 over 15 minus 10 over 15. And that's going to give us 6 minus 10 is negative 4 over 15. All right, so now this takes us to an example. How about 2 over x plus 5 over 3? So now suddenly the game changes a little bit because you have a variable here. But the idea is actually going to stay the same. We cannot add the fractions unless we have the same denominator. The idea of a least common denominator is that you have a value, you have an expression that both denominators go into. What I mean by that is back in number 3, we, 15 was the LCD because 5 goes into 15 evenly and 3 goes into 15 evenly. So these have to divide into the LCD perfectly. So if we have x and 3, well, the LCD would have to have an x so that x would go into this, but it also has to have a 3. Your LCD has to be divisible by these two terms. So my LCD is just going to be 3x. All right, now let's look at how this happens, how this will lead us to a solution. I already have the x in this denominator, but I also need a 3. So I'm going to multiply by 3 on the top and the bottom, and that becomes 6 over 3x. If you wanted to, you could reduce that to 2x, uh, to 2 over x, excuse me, which is right back to where we were. But for now, I'm going to leave it like that. 5 over 3. Well, we already have the 3, but we're missing an x in this denominator. So we'll multiply the top and the bottom of the fraction by x. So we get plus 5x over 3x. Now what we've done is we have created a common denominator. So now we can add the numerators. 6 plus 5x, you can't add those because they're not like terms. We're just going to leave it as 6 plus 5x all over the denominator 3x. That's as far as you can go with that. That right there is simplified. Okay, so what we have to do is we got to come up with the least common denominator. It has to be divisible by all the terms in your denominator. How about 4 over x squared minus 9 plus 7 over x plus 3? 
Well, what we're going to want to do in this case, these are obviously not the same, but if you can, you want to factor your denominator if it's possible. x squared minus 9 actually can factor. That's a difference of two squares. It's x plus 3 times x minus 3. We have to do that. We want to do that because it's going to make it easier to determine your LCD. Okay, so right now what we have is 4 over, that's x plus 3 times x minus 3, and then we're adding that to 7 over x plus 3. Okay, I'm going to think of the x plus 3 as a factor. I'm going to write it in parentheses. We cannot add these yet, though, because they're not identical denominators. They're not common denominators. Off on the side, the LCD, we have to have all the factors. They have to be included. So looking at the first fraction here in the denominator, we have to have the factor x plus 3 in the LCD. The other factor is x minus 3. We have to have that. Now, if you look at the second fraction, you'll say, well, we have to have an x plus 3 in the denominator. We already do. We've got it right here. Okay, so um, I don't have to put another x plus 3 here because it already exists. So this is my LCD, my least common denominator. So you have to ask yourself now, look at the fractions. Do we need to change anything about them? In the first fraction, x plus 3, x minus 3, that is the LCD. So we do not need to multiply by anything because this is already good. Now the second denominator, x plus 3, all right, yes, we have that, but we are missing x minus 3 here. So what we need to do is we're going to multiply by x minus 3, x minus 3. You have to do the same thing in the bottom and the top of the fraction to be consistent. Now the first fraction is good, 4 over x plus 3 times x minus 3 plus, now the 7 is going to multiply x minus 3. That's going to distribute, so that's plus 7x, and then 7 times negative 3 is minus 21 over, parentheses, x plus 3 times x minus 3. Now we have a common denominator. That means we can now add the numerators. So what we're going to do here, I'll do this, um, I'll do it down here. I'm not going to copy the denominator yet. I'm just going to do the numerators. 4 plus 7x minus 21. Now, if you can combine anything, you're going to do that. And in this case, we've got 4 minus 21. Those are like terms. That's negative 17 plus 7x. So negative 17 plus 7x divided by the denominator. Now those don't change. I just copy it x plus 3 times x minus 3. And this is as far as you can go. So what happens, it, it looks kind of complicated, um, but that is our final answer. We've simplified all that we can. So the general steps here, when you're adding and subtracting rational expressions, completely factor denominators to find a common denominator. So you gotta find the LCD. The LCD must have every factor from the original denominators. Okay, so in this last example, it had to have x plus three, yep. Had to have x minus three, yep. Had to have x plus three, yeah, we've already got it. Okay, so this is good. Write each fraction in terms of the common denominator. So we ended up having to multiply here to make the denominators the same. And then simplify the numerator. So that was where we added the two numerators. And now if you can reduce, you have to. But in this case, we can't reduce anything. So this is good. All right, so what we'll do here, let's flip it on to the back. I'm actually going to keep... I'm going to keep the directions up here. So these are kind of the steps that we have to take. Um, so on the back here, we've got example number 4. 9 over 10a plus 4a over 5b. Well, first thing we have to do 
is factor these, but they're already factored, so that's good. Step one is check. We got it. Completely factored. Step two, LCD must have every factor from the original denominators. So on the side here, let's set up an LCD. Now the first fraction, we have a 10, so we got to have a 10 in there. Um, the second fraction is a 5, so the common multiple of 10 and 5 is actually 10. So I'm going to keep the 10. We have to have an A, and from the second fraction we have to have a B. Okay, so here is our LCD 10AB. So now what we need to do, step three, is write each fraction in terms of the common denominator. 9 over 10a. Now we need to change this. That's not enough. We have to have 10ab. We need a b. So let's go ahead and take this. We need to multiply the bottom by b and the top by b. What that gives us is 9b over... I'm going to write this as 10AB, 10AB. Okay, so the first fraction is good. In the second fraction, 4A over 5B. Now, we want this to be a 10AB. So you're thinking 5 times what gets you to 10? The answer there is 2. Now, we also need to have an A. We don't have that yet, so I'm going to multiply by 2a. And then we already have the b, so I do not need to multiply by b. So I'm going to multiply by 2a, top and bottom. And in the top, 4a times 2a is 8. a times a, you add the exponents, it's a squared. 8a squared over, the denominator is 10ab. 10ab. Now look at what we have. The two denominators are the same, common denominators, so now we can add the numerators. And in this case, you cannot combine 9b with 8a squared, so we can just go straight to the answer here, which is going to be 9b plus 8a squared over 10ab. And that's as far as you can go. And that is the end of part one.